Hello and welcome to a deck profile based around Fate of One of Miracles Raziel. So this is the new deck that came out in DZBT01, quite a bit of a tongue twister to actually say the name of the set uh, via the code, Fated Clash otherwise known as. So there are two different formats in D-Standard now. We've got the pre-constructed uh, format and we've got also the regular D-Standard format. D-Standard format just lets you use any cards with the D icon on the bottom left corner. As pre-constructed, you have to use, as your main boss in the ride line, you have to use the one of the boss cards that have come out in one of the DZ sets, which includes the five start decks that recently came out, uh, as, as well as uh, DZBT01. It's also going to include any of the other DZ sets coming forward, such as Festival Collection, DZBT02 uh, as well. So to start with, uh, what I'll do is I'm going to go his deck profile, but I'm going to also note any of the cards that you change. So this is a pre-constructed uh, deck list. Uh, that I used, um, well, used recently, but also made a few little card changes. However, I'll also say what cards you may be considered to play if you're playing it for D-Stand as well. So to go through the right line, uh, one copy of Raziel, the main boss of the deck, and then we have one copy of Accenture. So when using Accenture, uh, this card revives a greater or less. It's very important uh, to set up your drop zone, obviously. So one of the things you can do to do that is to find Sir Gohan, which is the new dog promo, the really uh, popular but also quite expensive card and what you do is you look at the uh, you basically look at the uh, top two and then you add one to hand one to bottom but you have to have more units to your opponent or you use an order that term so you can use his retired cost to set up the drop zone but otherwise if you don't see him then you may have to consider discarding for your ride line to then set him up as well but you've got a few turns for that because it's on turn three that you do the skill anyway then we have the grade one. Uh, so this is a different grade one. It's not the same one uh, from the same ride line that Akina uses. So this is uh, an Alden uh, card, which you may remember from basically the end of uh, Will Dress, uh, used by Gooey, the Gooey's creator, I think. Uh, but uh, what, what he does is um, you reveal three different grades in your hand. And then, so unfortunately you have to actually show the cards uh, to your opponent. That's one of the downsides of this card, which I will compare the pros and cons. Uh, and then you look at top five, you choose a grade one or less from among them, and then you call it to rear and then shuffle. If you don't call a card, you call it to rear. So it's great in that if you succeed with this card, best case scenario, you see Sir go on. Uh, otherwise you may see Aerial Sage, which is also a decent target. But if things don't go well, then you just call this out to rear. But the problem with that, compared to the other grade one that you could be playing instead, is that calling this guy out basically means you have one less soul, whereas the other grade one option lets you soul charge, so you maintain the soul level. And that stuff does matter because uh, the deck does eat into your soul, especially over the long game. You start to lose more and more soul. And if you don't Persona Ride, for whatever reason, it makes it a lot worse. But then also you're missing out on the 2k power as well if you had Raziel as your vanguard. So by the time you're on turn 3, that 10k could make a difference. Because say for example you're riding first, 10k into 10k is good because you're person grade 2. Otherwise, 10k with say a 13k booster, because you're playing quite a lot of 13k boosters in the stack, uh, basically 23k column, can also hit magic numbers against your opponent going first if they're on 13k base. So the 10k grade 1 is still quite good uh, for that reason. So it's it's kind of hard to say um, what I prefer at the moment. Uh, this card is more like a um, high risk, greater reward. Uh, the other one's more like play it safe, but um, you're not getting like anything amazing out of it. But just uh, at least you're playing it safer. And then three cups of Raziel. So Raziel for the Persona Ride, of course, uh, being able to call two different grades, uh, some of based on your damage, so you can multi-tag. Um, so if you're on Persona Ride, you want to try and do five attacks to get the maximum value out of the aggression if you can. Obviously, that's going to come down to a number of factors, including over triggers, and also if you want to boost. And also how much damage you want in the first place, because you can't call more units if you're on low damage. So just uh, lines of place to consider, but uh, the deck can punish you for doing five attacks, because, uh, for example, this guy here. Uh, so two copies of Gigantic Masher. Uh, so what he does is if you've revived the card via Reziel's ability, he gets extra 15k power, so he becomes uh, 28, uh, excluding any other power-ups, of course. And then the issue with that is that, because you have to do it on response to your Vanguard swing, it does restrict your multi-tacking, because 
let's say you already have this in play, uh, then the problem is that you have to then, uh, to get the 15k buff, uh, unless you decide to cannibalize a call over it, of course, then you'd have to, uh, you'd have to actually call a unit somewhere else, but you can't call over him to get the 15k power. So that's a downside you have to kind of work with at the moment. And that that's, um, yeah, very important to just kind of know that um, when you're planning your attacks during each of the turns, which is why the deck does run 20k power grade twos, uh, so that you can sort of have a bit more wiggle room if you don't need all that power yet. It's also partly why I think people, some people play only one of this. It is still kind of, relatively situational in some cases not 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 super situational but like um it can be a bit uh at times because it depends if you want four or five attacks and then four is the energy cycler divine sister biscotti so biscotti is um just like any other energy cycler can blast one or energy blast three and then you basically get to um when guarding with it from your hand by the way it can't be from intercept has to be from hand or when discarding it uh, during your ride phase uh so like when you're doing your ride line stuff then what you can do is you draw a card, but uh, the other skill is similar in that you're paying the same types of costs. It's either can boss one or energy boss three when placed. Um, it can be placed from drop zone. It doesn't matter if it's from hand. Uh, so if you use Raziel, you can just revive it and then use a the skill. And what you do is you look at top three and then you can leave up to one on top of your deck and then you stack the rest on bottom. So you can't stack more than one on top of your deck with this. So you can't do any double triggers or anything like that. Uh, but if you're in the main phase, you can then call the card onto Rearguard Circle. So you can use it to basically fill up your board, but you have to be on Persona Ride uh, when doing that, just like the other Cycler. However, you're not stuck with having to count boss one, which is a good thing in that you're not forced to pay a cost that you may not be able to pay. Uh, but otherwise, very, uh, very useful uh, card in general. And if you're doing a battle phase, you just use it to stack a trigger. But otherwise, uh, going through a deck, digging deeper, finding what you need is always helpful as well. And the deck can uh, sometimes, especially depending on the matchup, can struggle to build a board. So it's always helpful to have that too, because you want to use Raziel for multi attack You don't want to just be using Raziel just so you can fill up a board and then just have three attacks. Then Fulkov is off uh, Forefront Knight. So this card's ability, when it's placed, uh, not by a, a unit's ability, then you can Soul Blast 1, look at top 5, and then you call a card... But otherwise, you can just add an order, uh, a normal order to your hand. So you can't add blitz orders, no sanctitude, for example. And the other skill is that when you attack uh, into a grade through a greater, it gains 10k power. Every um, nation has a version of that uh, skill, like, for example, Straga and Lyrical Monasterio. The first skill, going back to it, when you place this, because uh, this is something that kind of caught me out before, uh, I kind of misread at one point and kind of thought that uh, the... Angelic Order that does the draw two and then call two uh, wouldn't work with this, but actually turns out you can. So uh, the important thing to notice is that it says unit card and an order card is not a unit. So you can call this via, the, via an order's ability and then just use the skill anyway because an order is not a unit. So that still means you can keep more of your slots occupied and then have a, a bigger choice of targets uh, when you look at top five because at that point you know you can go for either booster or attacker. Then to go on to the uh, next thing. Oh, and also just remember this is a, this requires an order being played uh, for the effect to actually activate the check top five part. Uh, so to go on to the next thing, we have two copies of uh, Knight of Gentle Beauty Nobia. So Nobia is quite similar to this in that it can also help to fill your board, but you don't need to play an order. It is can plus one, but that's kind of fine to be honest. You could play more of this card, but I want to make room for tech slots and to be honest, you do find this card quite easily. So really the only upside of having some is, well, this is a turn three onwards card for one thing, because you can't use it early game, which is partly why I'm playing less copies. But it's also, um, it can also just be revived as well. It's just a way of calling units too, if you need to call units. So what you do with this is that you look at top three, uh, canvas one, and then you call a card. But if it's your battle phase, you don't call a card. Instead, you add it to your hand. So if you revive this uh, via Reziel, you can then look for a perfect guard or a trigger with 20k shield or something and then just add to your hand so you can defend next turn with it, which is really useful. And then the other skill is that when it's activated through a greater, just like this card, you Soul Blast 1 to then get 10k power. So it's a costed version of this card, for better or for worse. Sometimes Soul Blast can be handy, but otherwise uh, this card is almost always the better uh, attacker. But 
this card on placeability is much better during battle phase if you've got the Calm Blast to pay for it. And of course, if you haven't stacked the top of your deck either with any triggers. Uh, next, we have Knight of Lucidity Blethin. So this is a tech uh, to partly to counter the mirror match. So Aerial Sage, for example, if you see a problem with Aerial Sage, you want to damage choke them. You can then use this to get rid of not just the one on their field, but also the ones in their drop zone and then put them back into the deck. So then they have to try and draw into that card again, which uh, puts a bit of a strain on them as well. But any other matchup as well in general, like for example, Zorga, they have the grade three that gains crit and power and stuff. Hitting that is pretty good as well. Um, if you see, for example, a Valka player has one of the key combo pieces to doing you know, some very aggressive attacks next turn or counter charge engine if they're playing that, like if they just have one left on the board, then you can just ping one of those as well. Um, so there's, there's different targets and very different decks you can go after, which uh, makes this card worth playing, I think. And he's also usable from anywhere, so he doesn't have to be from hand, which means that Raziel, you can just call him uh, from drop, and you can intercept him with him next turn, and then you can revive him again and use the control ability. Of course, that's provided you don't really care about gaining tanky power uh, from your other grade two. So it's more for judgment call, but it's a very handy utility to have in deck. Four perfect guards. So for pre-constructed, you definitely play four perfect guards uh, like these ones, because there's no grade fours in that format at the moment. So there's no reason to play Sanctitude. And this card is just always going to be better than Sanctitude unless you're against a grade four, because otherwise you're just using this card one no matter what. And there's no guard restricts that are going to make you use Blitz Orders. Also, in fact, because you're playing two Blitz Orders in this deck, they would clash with this anyway. So more reason to play four copies of the regular Perfect Guards. So if you're playing regular standard format, then you could consider playing this uh, instead of these PGs. But to be fair, considering there's already two Heavenly Brights in this deck that I'm going to get to later, uh, it can be worth considering for all of this. So... Um, but this might change when uh, I start playing the Grade 2. You could play Sarges. I actually don't own any Sargesses. But Sarges uh, can be used, otherwise if you want to try and stack a trigger, uh, because Heavenly Bright, the reason I play Heavenly Bright is for trigger stacking. But obviously Blitz Order is good in that you, you're you not forced to rely on calling a unit onto the board, because the board is quite sensitive, you do need to be a bit selective on what you call. But we'll get into that bit a bit later. Uh, four copies of Sergoan. Sergoan is the expensive promo, the card I keep mentioning. So if you have more units than your opponent, or you've played an order this turn, He's basically going to gain 5k, and then at the end of battle he boosts. You then get to retire him, look at top 2, and then one to hand, one stack to bottom. So you can keep all your triggers and things in your deck. Of course, Raziel returns your crits anyway, so it's a bit um, it's a bit weird that I'm, I'm kind of explaining that bit. But in any other deck, it's, it's it kind of matters a lot more, of course. And being able to revive this and use it repeatedly, whether through Accenture or through Raziel, means that you're always going to be drawing massively through your deck, so you're able to find... This deck is very easy to find your perfect guards in. I usually draw like three perfect guards in every game on average. Obviously, I'm assuming one's been damage checked. So it's um, it's very handy for that. And setting it up as a retire early game, of course, for Accenture. But also, the the other thing you have to look out for is that, uh, just like with the Grade 3 uh, Gigantic Masher from earlier, basically, if you want to make use of this card, you have to put it behind a unit. So if you're using Raziel to revive this, you may potentially lose out on an extra attack. So that, that will happen. And that means you're playing to four attacks. So you're basically exchanging your offense for defense by going for this line of play. So you always have to kind of judge, have you got enough defense in your hands? Can you just um, maybe compromise and go for more attacks, especially on a Persona right turn? Because on a Persona right turn, you're gonna have bigger numbers, like minimum 30k usually. So then, you gotta also think about do I wanna try and snipe out an extra card from his hand during that turn rather than trying to find more defensive pieces. Next we have three copies of Aerial Sage. You do really want to draw this. Obviously, the extra copies you draw are kind of dud cards, but fill control is always gonna be a bit of a worry, um, especially if the form becomes more heavily back row retire. But at the moment, um the DZ decks uh, don't really do back row retiring much, so he's kind of okay to play at the minute, but I would Kind of keep an open mind about playing four copies, uh, just in case, depending on how the format shifts, uh, then four copies will become better. And at the minute, it's more so just space. Um, actually, partly, I don't I don't even own a fourth one. I actually sold all my spares, but uh, it's fine. Uh, I was going to play three for now. I'm, I'm going to try and acquire a fourth copy again, a, a silver rare, ideally. And then um, 
the other thing with this card is that it's good for also power. So you do want to draw him because he, he counter charges. So if your opponent's damage denying you or you're low on CB for a reason, you need to have access to that counter blast so you can use Raziel's skill. But then uh, also use other cards too because there's other cards in the deck that can counter blast. But also being a 13k booster if you have Raziel Vanguard, otherwise 15k when you boost a Raziel Vanguard while also counter charging, um, not just 2k, but you get the counter charge as well. But you have to also discard a card. So th this card could also be used as a revival fodder, potentially, uh, because you can use it before the Rezio attack. But if you do it after the Rezio attack, you can then just refund your counter blast to use for Rezio. So it's quite handy as well for synergies and making good numbers. 28k Rezio is always really good. 38k on Persona turns, because you can bail PG. Sometimes you don't need counter blast because you've got too much face up damage. You may decide to still use this card skill anyway because you just want power up uh, and you've de determined that it's worth discarding a card to try and bait out more defense from your opponent. Then four copies of the Angelic Order, Wisdom of Beginning, that cleared the world. It's not Regalia, sadly. But uh, Canvas 1, draw 2, and you place two cards uh, with grade equal to or less than your Vanguard. So the uh, Forefront Knight that we were speaking about earlier, uh, this card uh, is a good target to call with this because this is not a normal unit. Sorry, it's not a unit. So you can basically uh, call via the Order as well, which helps. And you're going through your deck more. So you're basically able to find more and more good cards. You're activating Sir Gohan as well, if you don't have more rare cards to your opponent. Usually uh, in this current format, you will tend to have more units than your opponent in most situations, unless your opponent goes out the way to play around you. But a lot of times in D format, people do retire their own cards during the battle phase and things. So uh, usually the board is not five rare cards at the end of the turn. Then um, Gratius uh, Grid. Dali, how you pronounce it, the Persona Ride Order. So this one I'm a bit mixed with. Persona Ride is very good in Rezio, especially because the deck plays a long game. And unlike Minerva, for example, who can use Lero uh, Limb to return a Minerva back to the hand from the drop zone, this deck has nothing like that that can return a lost Rezio back to your hand. So playing this is pretty good, but if you're playing in standard format particularly, you may want to consider Angel Bracing Ladder because uh, this card protects you against especially Nubatama, uh, so you can kind of mess with the deck a bit if you open this, but it's also usable on turn three. You get to turn this into a draw, in case you don't draw into this, and then you just go for um, your sorry, your, your order combos uh, because you played all that turn. That's the kind of the upside of playing this over this, but otherwise this card can also be really good as well. And then uh, to go a bit further, Blitz Order. So this is the Blitz Order I mentioned earlier, Heavenly Bright. So this card's Energy Blast 2 when played, you look at the top of your deck and then you can call it to Guardian Circle and it gains 10k shield. So you either get a good shield out of it or you leave a card on top. So ideally you're trying to heal uh, off the top of your deck or damage your trigger. If you're on Raziel and you use a Divine Skill, then this is when this card's real potential kind of kicks in because every trigger becomes a heal. So then instead of trying to look for specifically heals when you're on 5 damage, you're now just looking for any trigger. If you see a normal unit, you guard with it and then you just pray, just like the girl in this picture is praying. You pray that the next card that you, you're forced to damage check ends up being a recovery card. Otherwise, um, well, you didn't compress your deck enough. So ideally, you're trying to like stall the game out before you use Divine Skill if you can, because then that way you've got a much, much higher chance um, of actually damage checking a crit or front. Otherwise, you've still got a lot of normal units stuffed in your deck, then uh, it's not going to help. But the dog pro, uh, promo, uh, Sergo one, uh, this guy basically helps you to uh, compress your deck as well because you're basically putting all your triggers back while taking out normal units and things. Obviously, depends how aggressive your matchup is. If you get some more aggro deck, then you have to play a bit differently. Next, we have the crit triggers. So four copies of uh, Blade Feather Dragon. So Blade Feather is an uh, effect crit, so it can give you soul, which can be helpful. Then uh, four of the vanilla crits, you want to play maximum crits because the deck does return crits to your deck. It rewards you for high, the maximum crit count. Uh, one, Isodolfero. Uh, to be honest, I might change this out um, for Valnot because Valnot uh, can restand a unit. And I think uh, if your opponent is saving PGs, considering there's a lot more decks now that can go through a deck even more, and your opponent might even be on five damage because they're playing around you, because that, that can happen where you put your cards back into your deck to do use Divine Skill, you get a triple drive, and your opponent just takes your two early attacks before you do your revival call. Uh, so you kind of have to consider that sometimes. And the crit becomes a bit pointless in situations like that. So then he becomes even better. But if your opponent also has PGs, 
then this card is also not as great uh, compared to this one. But if you're on the triple drive, you're more likely to hit a crit as well. So if you do happen to get this on your triple drive, uh, then you could also um, have a resound with crit as well. But this guy is also good in that he can help you uh, retrieve a car from drop, which normally there's good cards in drop zone in this deck because unlike, say, Minerva, which plays draw triggers, this deck plays front triggers, uh, which we have three copies of. So the front triggers, um, they're a 20k shield, which is much better than draws. So this deck does a lot of blind drawing. Uh, which means that if you're using, for example, the Angelic Order, you draw two and then you see a draw trigger, it feels really bad. But if you see a 20k shield, you feel kind of good about it because you knew you know you draw into a good card. So it's always helpful to, to see stuff like that. It's quite motivating. It does boost your morale, um, not drawing into draw triggers. And also the deck doesn't does have a bit of a deck out issue, actually. Even with Raziel's Divine Skill, you can still deck out because the deck, the, sorry, the format has become super grindy right now. Uh, with some of the decks that they brought in. Uh, Rezio is, is obviously a big culprit in that. So you can actually go on for many turns playing this deck as well, especially if your opponent is also playing a more defensive deck that grinds into long game, which is kind of like why it's quite good to go against, I think, something like Varga, because Varga is quite aggro sometimes. Um, I mean, it is quite conditional to, to go a bit heavier, but into the Divine Skill, because you have to be on full damage. But uh, Varga can actually try and push uh, much harder, I think, which is quite helpful uh, for playing faster paced games. And then four copies of the heal triggers as well, so you can recover. But I'm not really sure about playing stuff like Invigorate Sage or Heart Hearty Tear Sorcerer, whatever the name is, because um, it is kind of more of a medical. But at the moment, I think a lot of stuff is quite standard right now, so you might as well play normal heals until we start to see a format where people start playing like too many uh, crit gaining abilities or a uh, restanders or something right which isn't really going on right now so that's more or less it for the deck profile i hope you enjoyed and um i will catch you guys later goodbye